In this lesson, we're just going to do a couple more examples um, of simplifying variable expressions that are a little more on the difficult side um, of these types of problems. So let's start with this first one here. And we know we got to use a distributive property in a number of places to, to begin with. Um, and we see this negative outside the parentheses. Remember that what that means, right? That really means negative 1 times 3 plus 2x. And you can go ahead and rewrite it as negative 1 if you'd like. Um, and, and I think that can be very helpful. Plus 4 times x plus y in parentheses. Minus y times 7 minus x in parentheses. So we need to perform our distribution within each set of parentheses. So we have negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. Negative 1 times positive 2x is negative 2x. And so again, using the negative symbol and minus sign interchangeably, we get minus 2x. 4 times x is 4x. 4 times y is 4y. And then, uh, of course, here we're going to kind of treat this minus like it's a negative. And so think of this as negative y times positive 7, which would give us negative 7y. Right? We always like to put that coefficient before the variable, so that's why I'm putting the 7 first. And then negative y times negative x would give us a positive. So we'll have a plus here, and then you know, just write x times y. And I just put x first simply to put it in alphabetical order. And I suppose you don't have to do that. So now we'll look for like terms. Um, I have like terms here with negative 2x plus 4x. Right? Both have x's to the first power. 4y and negative 7y are also like terms. Now xy, you might be tempted to say that it's like either the y terms or the x terms, but since it's multiplying both variables together, it's a completely different animal. And so it's not a like term with any of those other terms. So finally, we can finish by combining our like terms by adding or subtracting the coefficient. So negative 2 plus 4 is positive 2. And so we have negative 3 plus 2x. And then 4y minus 7y would be negative 3y. So we have minus 3y, and then finally plus xy. All right, so there's our simplified expression for that first example. Okay. All right, now this next one has some fractions involved, so that always adds a little bit of difficulty. Let me rewrite this thing before doing anything else. Give myself some space. So we have a couple of distributions to do before worrying about anything else. All right, so we'll mul uh, multiply 2 thirds by x and by negative 2. So we have 2 thirds x and one thing I suggest is when you're multiplying a fraction by a whole number, go ahead and let that whole number have a 1 on bottom. So think of this as minus 2 thirds times 2 over 1. And then we have minus 4 fifths y. And then a negative times a negative will be a positive. And then we have 4 fifths times 3 over 1. And then minus 5x plus 1 half y just come along for the ride. All right, so what we end up with here is, let me go back to blue, that's a little easier to see, 2 thirds x minus 4 thirds minus 4 fifths y plus 12 fifths minus 5x plus one half y. All right, so whenever we're working with fractions and we understand that we need to have common denominators, uh, I always find it helpful to go ahead and put the like terms next to each other. Um, I think that just 
makes things stay a lot more organized. And so my next step here is going to do, be to do that. So I'm going to put 2 thirds x and minus 5x right next to each other. And because I understand that I'm going to need to subtract these, and I'm going to need to get common denominators, I'm going to go ahead and turn my 5 into a fraction by saying 5 over 1x. All right. And since there's so many terms involved, I'm going to mark the terms as I rewrite them so I make sure I don't forget any. All right, so now let's write negative 4 fifths y or minus 4 fifths y plus 1 half y. And then finally, uh, negative 3 fourths or minus, or sorry, minus 4 thirds plus 12 fifths. Okay. So, of course, we need to get. Uh, common denominators uh, for our like terms. So for our x terms, looks like we need a 3 on the bottom of each fraction. So I'll multiply the top and bottom of 5 over 1 by 3. Um, let's see, my least common denominator for the y terms must be 10. So I'll multiply the top and bottom of 4 fifths by 2 and the top and bottom of 1 half by 5. And then here, my least common denominator is 15. So I'll multiply by 5 on top and bottom of 4 thirds and by 3 on top and bottom of 12 fifths. And so cleaning all this up, what I get is 2 thirds x minus 15 thirds x minus 8 tenths y plus 5 tenths y and then minus 20 fifteenths plus 36 fifteenths. So finally we can combine all these. 2 minus 15 is negative 13 so we have negative 13 thirds x. Negative 8 plus 5 is negative 3 so this is going to be minus 3 tenths y and then negative 20 plus 36 is going to be plus 16 fifteenths and again as I've said before in an algebraic expression we're always going to stick with improper fractions we'll never turn those improper fractions into mixed numbers